thank you very much for remaining till the end. I think if you want, you can still leave. But <laughs> <laughs> sure, cool. So yeah, I'm here to present Gauntlet, which is a wearable to manipulate free floating objects. And this work was conducted in Sussex University. So to begin, what is acoustic levitation? Acoustic levitation is the use of mechanical waves, for instance, ultrasound, to manipulate particles. And it has lots of advantages. For instance, it is contactless, so you can use it to manipulate dangerous materials. When you manipulate samples, the contamination is minimum because you are not touching it with anything. And also, it provides less visual occlusion. Besides, it's useful for a variety of sizes and materials. For instance, you can levitate crystals in air, you can levitate capsules of medicines inside your body, or you can levitate cells in water. So, why wearable acoustic levitation? Does it make any sense, or why we should even try to achieve it? And I think my thoughts here is that tools have enabled human progress. And probably this acoustic levitator, this globe for levitating particles, is a new tool, a future tool that will be used to solve future challenges. For instance, I was thinking about zero-G environments, as it could be in the space station, if you have ever seen the astronauts, all the nuts, all the, all the things that they are doing, they are always floating adrift. So if you had an instrument which you, with which you can control particles remotely, they would help a lot of them, and also underwater scenarios. Or if you don't want to be so futuristic, you can think about picking and placing electronic circuits, like electronic components, in, an el in a PCB. They are very small, they are very tiny, so with a contactless manipulation, you would be able to pick them, orientate them, place them, and always with good visual contact in them. A very quick intro into sound, ultrasound. So if you have a, a wave there, these are the main three properties. You have amplitude, which is how loud the sound is. You have frequency, which is how deep or how high, or if it's ultrasound, you cannot hear, but basically frequency is the inverse of the wavelength, how quickly it oscillates. And the most important for us, although it's the most tricky, it's phase. Phase is when the wave was started. You can have similar waves, similar amplitude, similar frequency, but depending on the offset, they will have different phases. You can think of people singing the same song, but uh, these people could have started from different points. So while one is starting to sing, the other is already in the middle of the song. Nice thing with phase is that uh, you can have what's called phase arrays. Phase arrays have lots of emitters. They are all emitting with the same amplitude, same frequency. And just by changing the phase, you can completely control the acoustic field. Here, on the left, you can see like a no no phase control. All the all the transducers they have zero phase. And on the on the well, sorry, on your right, yeah, you can see that we have created a focal point where we want it just by changing the phase of the transducers. This enables to create acoustic structures that support levitation. The two most simple, or the two most common structures that you can think is the standing wave and the twin tramp. On the left, you have the standing wave. It's two opposed rays and you can put particles on each of the antinodes. The antinodes are the dark regions with low amplitude. And the twin trap is a structure to capture particles when you only have a single beam emitter. And basically it looks like two fingers that are trapped in the particle. So you may be asking like why particles levitate in, a, in an acoustic field, and I wouldn't go into details, but basically there is something called radiation force. And the radiation force pushes particles that are in, inside an acoustic field. There are two main forces. One is the amplitude gradients, which is represented by the blue arrows, and you have also the velocity gradients, which are represented by the green arrows. Amplitude gradients, they are very easy to understand. They are basically the particles will be pushed from, from high amplitude regions to low amplitude regions, and the velocity gradients, they are a little bit more complicated, but basically, if you have a curved structure, the particles will try to go to the narrowest point. So if you had to design a device for levitation, I think, at least for me, the most straightforward way would be to use that. You use a standing waves between your fingers and you use a twin trap on the palm of your hand. And basically this device is a prototype and it was using 40 kilohertz emitter with a 16 volts peak to peak, 120 decibels at 30 centimeters. It's basically the standard system that we all use. And how this looks in a video, Now the very important part, you have this 
device to manipulate particles contactlessly. So what maneuvers you can do with it? And I basically classify them as capture maneuvers, movement, transfer, combine, and release. And all these maneuvers, they can be done either manually, so you levitate the particle, you move your hand, and of course the particle is going to move with your hand, or it can also be done by the computer. The computer will modify the faces to move the particle. And I don't know if you will be able to focus, but uh, here are some of the maneuvers. I don't know if you have had time to notice, but on the right, combination on top is done automatically. The computer moves the bits until they meet each other, whereas below, it's done manually. You basically put together your hands and the particles meet. And I think this is a very interesting part. Like The maneuvers, they can be done by the human, because the human moves the hand, or it can be done by the computer, because the, because the computer alters, changes the faces to move the particle. And this creates what's called computer-assisted maneuvers. Here is a very like, rudimentary diagram that shows you s when the maneuvers are done completely by the human or completely by the computer, or what is really interesting, when they are a mixture. So in A, for instance, the movement is completely done by the human. The human moves the hand. By the way, the blue, the blue arrows represent the movement of the human, and the red arrows represent the movement of the bead. So in A, the, the, move, the, the hand moves, and so does the bead. In B, for instance, the, 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 the hand is completely static and it's the computer, the one who moves the particle. And for instance, if you check C, the hand is moving, but the particle is always in the same size, in the same place. So that's what I call a stabilization. And I will show you a video of it. you have seen is that although the hand moves, the particle is always in the same place. Along Gauntlet, I develop other devices, like ultra tongs or the sonic screwdriver. And you may ask, like, why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, apart, yeah, the sonic screwdriver, <laughs> sorry, it doesn't look at all like a screwdriver. But uh, what I discovered when I was working with these wearable manipulators is that our hands, they are not designed to work with a contactless manipulation. For instance, if you look at your thumb and your index in a pink gesture, you will see that the thumb is 45 degrees deviated from the index. Naturally, if you look at your index and thumb, the thumb is 45 degrees. So it's very, very hard to trap particles and keep your fingers aligned while you move them. Basically, as I said, our hands, they are not designed for contactless manipulation. And that's what I developed these other devices. So what I see as future work is that we should include more maneuvers, all right? Capture is basically, you can capture particles from the surface, you can capture particles when they are resting in another levitator, but we need more maneuvers. Combining, transferring, it's not enough. A very interesting maneuver could be sorting particles. Imagine that you have several particles trapped between your fingers and you want to sort them, for instance, by size or by density. I think I can do that, theoretically at least, and it would be another maneuver that would be interesting, sorting particles. Also, grid arrangements, instead of only one line, you can have a matrix of particles, and you can basically change this grid. So I, I, if you have partic red particles, green particles, you say, oh, I may want to put all the red particles on the left, I want to put all the grid particles on the right. And also, it was a little bit um, lame. All the captures, they, they were very restricted. Capture is the main maneuver, because it's how you start. The particle is in somewhere, and you need to put it into the levitator to start the, the manipulations. So far, I can only capture particles when they are resting in an acoustically transparent surface. It means like basically like a very thin fabric, then you can capture because they are transparent to sound. Or I can only capture also with the help of a little, some kind of little plate. So uh, basically, I put there, I, and I use a plate to raise the particle till the right position. But I think it's very important to have the ability to capture particles when they are directly resting on a surface. So a particle is resting on a surface on your table, inside a, uh, like a, a bottle, and you want to capture this particle. So basically, you should be able to put your hand and then raise the particle. And that's what I call an abduction rate. That so far, it has not been done. But it should be, I think it's the basic maneuver that should be invented. 
And of course, we always would like more power and more portable devices. And I think this can be done with acoustic waveguides. Now the sound is generated on the speakers that are attached on your hand. But if you observe your hand, the force, all your muscles are on the forearm. And you transmit the force to the arm through tendons. So we could use the same theory here. You have all the generators in your forearm, and you transfer the acoustic power to the fingertips using acoustic waveguides. And of course, more user studies in the lab environment and in zero G environments. To conclude, our hands were not designed for contactless manipulation. So in future works, I will focus on sonic tweezer or micro pipettes or sonic screwdrivers because it was really, I had a very hard time using these wearable levitators. And this is the first proposal of wearable levitators. And my question is, we will see them again because these devices, as, as you have seen, they are bulky, they have limited power, but I don't know, I, th I think that everything has a beginning. And although this paper was a little bit uh, short and uh, scrappy to some point, well, like this talk, but <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it holds, it holds the, the, the promise of, a, of technology that it has never seen. So that's all, thank you very much for listening. Okay, uh, Ron Hao Liang from National Taiwan University. This is a very interesting project. I think it's just like augmenting the superpower on your hand. Yeah, and uh, but the, the form factor currently is apparently not acceptable, right? So uh, I would like to hear about what's your, uh, uh, what, what, what do you think uh, about the most critical technical challenge to shrink the form factor uh, to the next development? There are two main factors that limit it. One is uh, directivity. If you want to have uh, a little bit of directive, directive devices, like they need to be broad. If they are very, very tiny, the power just gets dispersed. So you need quite a big surface, well, big as it is. And the second one is generating this energy. But I think we can solve this problem, as I said, by using acoustic waveguides. You generate the sound in your forearm, and this sound is directed to your fingertips using some acoustic waveguides. Okay, thank you. Hi there. Uh, so my name is Paul Stroma at Copenhagen University. I would totally use this for placing small components in, I'm so sorry, uh, for placing small components on a PCB. Um, and now a thought that worries me is how does it deal with echo? Because if I hold this over a PCB, the sound will be reflected back. Is that a problem? You mean if you use your fingers like parallel to the table, try to move them? It all depends on how the technique you use. You could use it like that, like your fingers parallel to the table, or you could actually take advantage of that reflection and place the components uh, like that between your finger and the wave reflects on the table, on the PCB. So yeah, uh, possibly you could uh, take advantage of that reflection. But if I were stupid and I would not take advantage of it, it would interfere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm asking, is, is, is an echo something that you have to deal with in these designs? Uh, not from what I have seen. Okay, like, cool. Uh, you can manipulate the particles on the table, and, but they have to have a certain height. If they are very close to the table, you're right. Like the echo limits how close the the component can go to the table. Okay, thank you.